Hello there, I'm Anxious Cynic, and welcome back to another Monomator tutorial. Something I've gotten asked quite a bit about over the years is, can you use Bedrock Worlds in Monomator? And unfortunately, the answer has always been no, unless you can find a way to convert the world. Well, today's the day I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna show you how you can use a program to convert your Bedrock Worlds and or builds into Java so that you can use them in Monomator. So to start off, we're going to go to this website here. I'll have a link in the description and you're going to download this app called Amulet. So what you're going to get is this zip folder and all you need to do is right click and extract all. Once you do that, it's going to give you a regular folder, of course. Then all you got to do is scroll down until you find the amulet.exe application file and uh, double click it to open it up. So just to note here, similar to Minimator, your antivirus, if you have one, is going to ding this software. It's going to say that, you know, it's not trustworthy or whatever. I ran scans on it. There's other people who've done videos. A lot of people seem to use it. So far as I can tell, it's safe. But uh, if you're wary about it, then uh, just make sure you don't give them your credit card number. Give them your mom's. So once you're in the Amulet app, we're just going to click Open World. And uh, you can see here I already have the worlds that I've been playing with but on the left side here you'll have Java and Bedrock. So we're gonna go to our Bedrock worlds at first and then I'm just gonna find a world that I want to import something from and click on it. Now the process of opening a world may take a little bit of time. Unfortunately in this case it looks like the program just kind of pooped out on me so I had to wait forever until I just decide to close it out and start over so the program does have some bugs and some missing features right now uh, but if you get it to work, <laughs> it works. So after trying again, we finally got the world open here and we're gonna go to the left side there and click on the 3D view. And it's gonna take a bit to kind of get everything set up so it can display it. Once again, as long as it doesn't get hung up here, you just wait a little bit and it'll get it all set up and good to go. And then you'll have a 3D view, very similar to what you would have in Minecraft itself. So once it's loaded up, as you can see, we are in the world technically where I uh, last logged out. You can look around by holding right click. You can use your WASD to move around in the world just like you would in Minecraft. I think space is up, shift makes you go down. Uh, you can go up here to the options tab on the top toolbar and then you have controls and whatnot you can check out what all the controls are for what they do but uh, besides that you should be good to move on so before we get going with this world we actually need to open up the world that we want to import this one into which is of course going to be java so we're going to go to the main menu tab we're going to go down to java and then we're just going to select the world that I want to bring this one into. And once that's opened up, it did it really fast because I've already had it open before. But uh, once we have that opened up, then we can get to the good stuff. So now that we've gotten that world open, we're going to go back over to our bedrock world. And then I'm just going to draw out a uh, selection here to get this little house build that I want to bring into that Java world. Now you can try to convert an entire world. Uh, I did that, but it seemed a bit wonky. I didn't quite get that. So uh, for now, I've just mainly focused on bringing in builds that I wanted or sections of the world in the way that I'm showing here in this video. But you can actually just go to convert and try to convert an entire world. But you do have to do the same process. You have to have a Java world ready that you're going to import that one into. And uh, as far as I understand, it also copies over the coordinates. So if something you want in your bedrock world is, you know, way off on another coordinate, then if you know those coordinates in bedrock, I think you can go to them again in Java. So you can use the 3D view here like I'm doing to draw this out, or you can use the parameters on the left side in order to get the uh, fine tune adjustments you need, or if you just can't seem to select it the way you want to. So above that area, we're going to go ahead and click copy. Alternatively, on the bottom here, you can see these other buttons and we have export. You can actually export the selection into a file that then you can use to import into worlds afterwards instead of having to come back to this world and select this all over again. Now with that done, we're going to go back into our Java world here. And then you can see we have the same buttons on the left side and I'm going to click paste. And there it is. There's our selection from the bedrock world now in our Java world. And it's kind of just glued to the cursor here, so I'm just going to click 
left click. And uh, then we can use the location parameters here to fine tune exactly where we want to put this. So now I've got the build where I want it to be in the world and I'm just going to go down here and click confirm. And that should pretty much be it. The build is confirmed in its location and it should be set. Now we can go up here to this icon, the save icon and click that. And as long as nothing went wrong, that should be saved into the Java world now. Now there are some issues I had when I did this and then I went into the Java world and the changes didn't save. Uh, that happened to me twice and both times I think I had uh, Minecraft open already. So that could have been the reason. So maybe don't have Minecraft open while you're editing these worlds. So just to double check our work here, I'm in Minecraft and as you can see, there's our world changes. That's the, uh, the save from Bedrock. I am in Minecraft Java right now and I am in this build from Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Everything is pretty much as you'd expect, though the chests are empty. So in terms of using this in, as a gameplay mechanic, I'm not too sure how effective that'll be other than just, you know, getting your builds. But in any case, all the important stuff is here. And here's one of the other little issues. So you may have to correct this in game is uh, the rotation of stairs is kind of wonky that though I don't think that is implemented yet. So you'll have to come in and fix some of this stuff if you want to make sure your build doesn't look uh, how you don't want it to look. But anyway, once you get everything fixed up and ready to go, let's go ahead and see if we can bring this baby into Minimator. So as per usual, I'm gonna open up a scenery object and then go to the import from world section, click on my world, and here is our world save in Minimator. It's a Java save. It's got our build from Bedrock. Let's go ahead and just select the area as you normally would and click done. Give that a second to process and then we're going to go on and create that object into our Minimator world. And there you go. As you can see, we now have our Bedrock build in Minimator. We can even animate the trap door. It uh, saves all that data, fortunately. So all of your moving blocks and things that Monimator would normally import and allow you to edit in a Java world is retained here, uh, save for any you know bugs or anything that happened. But there you go. There's a bedrock world, a bedrock build in Monimator. So now you can animate to your heart's content even if you're a bedrock Minecraft player. I don't know why the camera is so orange. The white balance is going crazy. Uh, maybe I'll be able to fix it in post, but either way, it is what it is. Um, so a couple of little notes here. If you don't have Minecraft Java, then there's a couple of things you can try. One is you can go online and download a Minecraft Java world. That should allow you to do this. Of course, you know, with the stair issue and whatnot, I don't know if you can't go into Java and fix it. Uh, you know, but maybe, you know, it's enough of a workaround where you can still get something usable. Uh, the other thing is you might be able to get the Minecraft demo, the Java demo. And if that creates like a world save folder and whatnot, then you might be able to do just enough to get by without even having to buy Minecraft Java. So that's something else to consider. Another thing that's kind of related to this that I often get asked is there's an error in Minimator where you try to open a world and it won't let you. It, it errors out and uh, it kind of just kills the whole scenery importing process and there doesn't really seem to be a workaround. Well, this is potentially a workaround. Some of the scenery you saw in my Java world was from another Minecraft save that was giving me that error. And I think the error is due to having an old Minecraft world and opening it up in Minecraft in an updated version. So if you had a world from like 1.16 and now you're opening it in 1.17, 1.18, then that conversion would cause a problem in Minimator's world importer. So what you could potentially do now is start a new world that's in the latest version and then use this software to bring your build or your other world into the new world and then Minimator will be able to open it up. And then since it's, I guess, kind of, you know, a fresh scenery place in the new world, it's not an old world save anymore, 
Mind Meter will allow you to import that. So that's a way to get around that little error. So that's gonna do it for me and my orange self here. Uh, hopefully it was helpful. If it was, hit that like button, comment, and let me know what you think, and I will uh, see you guys in the next video.